Hey, this is for my AP Chemistry class. So I'm gonna do bonding notes today and we're gonna start with the ones that say AP Chemistry, uh, chemical bonding and molecular structures. So I put them on Google Classroom. You should be able to find them under the bonding file. So first of all, a chemical bond is something that holds two, it's a force that holds two atoms together, two or more atoms together. Um, most things are bonded, most things are molecules, um, carbon dioxide, water, um, I don't know, the ozone, three oxygen molecules, or three oxygen atoms. So most things are um, chemically bonded, and there's a lot more mo molecules there are than just individual elements, pure substances of elements, because atoms are more, it's a lower energy state. Things bond to get to the lowest energy state to get to the most stable state that they can um, and so because of that they're going to bond and then we learned that when we talked about bonding why they bond it's because they want to be stable they want to be like the noble gases they want to have their eight valence electrons and to do that bonding satisfies those needs that they have so whenever they do this it's actually going taking them to a lower energy state which means that they're more stable which means that when bonds form energy is released um, to break bonds we have to have energy, it requires energy to break bonds. When bonds form, energy is released, which is super important to note. We've already talked about it whenever we were talking about thermo and we were calculating um, the enthalpy of different reactions and bond energies. You've worked some problems already with that. That's just a reminder. Your first vocabulary word in your notes is bond energy. It's the energy required to break the bond. So if I tell you the bond energy between oxygen and hydrogen is blank, um, joules per mole or kilojoules per mole or, or whatever, then that means that it is, that's the bond energy. That's how much energy you need to be able to break that bond. Um, we have different types of chemical bonds, ionic and covalent. Ionic is typically between a metal and a non-metal. It is a positive charge and a negative charge, and a cation and an anion, um, and they're not going to share, they're going to transfer. So if you go back to your first year chemistry notes, you should be able to look at and see that they transfer electrons, um, that they have a high melting point, that they're crystalline solids at room temperature. They have all these chemical properties of ionic compounds. You should go back and look at those. They are not in these AP notes. Um, I will, I can post the first year notes on Google Classroom so you can access those as well. Um, and then we have covalent bonds. Um, and covalent bonds are between two nonmetals. Um, techni the technical definition is it's less than one point, electronegativity of less than 1.67. Um, so that would be nonmetals bonding together. And they have low melting points. Um, they are not good conductors of heat and electricity. You should look at all of those characteristics of covalent bonds as well. So um, that's the first three vocabulary words on your notes. The next one is Coulomb's law. Um, Coulomb's law lets us calculate the energy of an ionic compound, an ionic bond. And how we do that is with the equation that's in your notes, it says E equals 2.31 times 10 to the negative 19th. Um, and then you skip over and it has Q1, Q2 over R. Your Qs, Q1 and Q2, are your charges of your ionic compounds. So if you have a plus 1 and a minus 2, it would be those uh, charges. And then the R is the distance between the centers of those atoms. Um, so the ionic centers. And so it's nanometers because it's super small, size matters, make sure you watch your units. If you look over by the E, it has joules and then NM, the NM is nanometers. Um, you should have a negative and a positive sign because it's ionic. You can calculate the repulsive forces with Coulomb's law. That last little part underneath says that you can do that, um, but then you have the same charge, and so you can play around with that one. Um, I can see if I can find any AP problems that work that. Valence electrons is our next category. Valence electrons are super important. You need to know your valence electrons. You need to know how to calculate the valence electrons. You should just be able to look at the periodic table and see them. If you need a review first year, we can. Um, you also need to be able to do Lewis dot diagrams, Lewis dot structures of individual atoms and of molecules. So hydrogen has one electron, okay? Oxygen would have six valence electrons and so on and so forth. And you can draw, um, like I could draw water and this would be the compound here. 
Um, and we'll talk about the shape and structure of it as well. All very important things. Um, but you need to be able to do those Lewis dot diagrams. So if you can't remember that, let me know and I can do a specific YouTube video on how to draw Lewis dot diagrams. Um, make sure you know your exceptions. So helium is an exception. So helium only has two valence electrons and it is stable. Hydrogen only needs two valence electrons to become stable. It has one. It can also lose its only electron. Um, all of your other noble gases are going to have eight valence electrons. Neon, argon, xenon, those guys. Um, so now we're getting to chemical bond formation. So I'm going to end the notes with this part and we'll pick up with the next section. So that way we can just do little small segments.